Hey everyone, Michael Anthony here. Van Halen, Chickenfoot, Sammy in the Circle. But anyway, you're listening to the only podcast that is dedicated to breaking down the entire Van Halen catalog one track at a time. And the podcast will rock. Ow! Hello, baby! Welcome, all you rockers, rockets, and everything in between. You have joined us for a new edition of And the Podcast Will Rock. We are the show that dives into the catalog and discography of one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time, Van Halen, one track at a time. I am one of your co-hosts, Mark Kamaya. Joining me, as always, Corey Morissette. Corey, how are you feeling? Are you as tired as I am? Uh, tired but content i tell you we had a, a tremendous all-star august uh here on the show mark we had amazing guests uh all the way through uh but it, it's kind of nice just to get back to to just you and i in a kind of a a, a low-key uh, affair this evening now uh, uh this weekend i sat in a chair for six hours and watched every second of the taylor hawkins tribute concert and i don't regret a, mi- a second of it but you were a little busy uh where were you this weekend well you mentioned uh low key and uh i was uh <laughs> busy playing loki over uh at dragon con in atlanta dragon con 2022 uh the lady and i uh made our way down there and it's it's basically a week long just about a week long event uh if you've never been um i won't say it rivals uh san diego's comic con um in in terms of scope but it is pretty damn big. I think they set a uh, uh, a new, uh, well, not a new record, but uh, since we are quote unquote post pandemic, uh, we set a record for uh, sixty five thousand in attendance. Wow. Um, it was craziness. And uh, don't you worry, I am I'm still good. I'm still healthy. I've checked. I've tested. Uh, <laughs> we're good. We're good to go on that one. Um, but it was an overwhelming uh sight to behold and you guys know me uh or if, maybe you don't know me that well but if you do you know i i live for the nerdiness and all the good geeky shit and uh dragon con is nothing if not geeky shit and uh some of the highlights i must point out live music live music at the con uh we uh we got to see uh bands like I Centilla and the Crew Shadows, who are sort of a kind of goth rock slash uh, uh slight EDM dance sort of uh bands, but they are uh mainstays at the con and they did a fantastic job, as well as some of the other subsidiary bands. Heard a lot of folk rock and folk metal bands that were playing though that was always good fun it's good to have some rock and roll and some metal join you at a convention i, I didn't know folk metal was a thing oh it's a thing i mean it's and there are layers there are layers of folk metal as well uh bands like the who uh that do old mongolian style uh music uh you could say that's folk metal uh, because they do definitely play in the metal style. Uh, Heilung, the sort of Norse metal. They're kind of metal, but they they play on traditional instruments. So by definition, it's not really metal, but the way they present it is pretty damn heavy. So you be the judge. Uh, so yeah, folk metal, it, it exists in, in different kind of uh, layers there. Yeah. I tell you what, what also exists that you don't know too much about. That's Canadian uh, music, Mark. And I'm very excited because uh, coming up actually this Sunday morning, you and I are going to be uh, recording an episode of the Sean Geek and Fast Fret podcast with our buddies from Manitoba. And we're going to introduce you uh, to a little Canadian music. And uh, me, me and the boys were kind of going back and forth today on on potential acts. And I know uh, you got a kick out of some of the band names. We got bands like uh, Killer Dwarves, uh, New Meanies, um, The Odds, Max Webster, Headstone. Uh, the tragically hip, of course, triumph. Uh, you're you're in for for quite an education this weekend, and I, I really think you're going to like what we picked out for you. You mean to say that it's not just a mix of Rush tunes because that's that's what you Canadians listen to, right? Just Rush. Well, we we listen to Rush, but there's there's a lot more than <laughs> Rush uh, north of the border, my friend. And actually, no Rush tunes at all. 
uh, on, on what we're interested because you've heard a lot of rush so that's true uh, it's yeah. very true <laughs> yeah but uh very excited about that sean geek and fast right we're on our show a couple of weeks ago last week of course we had the big uh collab with uh, kelsey and uh, eric senich uh who uh if you uh, follow him at all uh, on social media uh, on his website booked on rock uh, he's doing a blog now and wrote some very nice things uh, about our show mark so i would uh, uh, yeah, recommend everyone go check out his blog uh, he's been writing a lot about uh, wolfgang van halen uh, this week too because that was big news mark i know you were busy saturday but uh, uh the taylor hawkins tribute concert was amazing top to bottom uh so many highlights but for us van halen fans uh like we knew uh wolfie was going to be in london at wembley doing something uh with, with foo fighters and what have you uh what we got though is a little tribute not only to taylor hawkins but to his pops as well as uh, they came out and did on fire and hot for teacher with uh, dave grohl on bass and, and wolfie on guitar and uh, justin hawkins from the darkness on vocals uh just an amazing performance I mean, I uh, you're right. I did miss it on the uh, on the live show. Uh, but upon my uh, uh, return home, I did notice uh, on Paramount Plus that they did sort of give us a sort of a highlight uh, of the uh, uh, performances of the night. So I got to see the Hot for Teacher uh, performance for sure. Um, and I, I must say, not shocked, not shocked that the level of skill and just outright amazing amazingness of the performance given who were involved uh but it's still really nice to see and it's nice seeing uh it's because wolfie's got that same uh van halen grin that his old man has uh and when he plays and when he's when he knows he's he's uh uh ripping the stage right you know that grin shows up on his face and it's like oh my god that's that's got a melt your heart a little bit even if you were just uh, just a a casual fan of eddie van halen at best that's still looking at him up on stage seeing that grin uh while he's just melted the faces with his guitar solo that's it's gotta make you feel good i, I got a little teary-eyed i'm not gonna lie it was amazing and to see uh wolfie get up there on his own terms uh doing van halen stuff because ever since uh his his dad died Everyone's oh you, you know you gotta you know you should reform Van Halen with Wolfie playing guitar and it's like no, let the kid you know forge his own path and honor his dad his way. I don't think his dad would want him just playing old Van Halen songs the rest of his life. He'd want him going out there and, and doing his own thing. And his own thing is pretty fucking incredible. That Mammoth WVH album is absolutely amazing. And I, we heard it today really uh, uh, Wolfie said next week he's starting work on on album two. So I got very, very excited. I can't wait to hear that. But uh, I know earlier this week, uh, one of these uh, music sites posted, again, you know, Wolfie's so good, uh, they should reform Van Halen with David Lee Roth, with Sammy Hagar, with Michael Anthony, and Wolfie could play guitar and go out on the road. And Greg Runoff actually first uh, said no, and then Wolfie said, I agree, absolutely no. <laughs> Just, you know, let let Wolf go out and, and forge his own path and do his own thing. And he, he's honoring his dad every single time he picks up a guitar and plays music as far as I'm concerned and his own stuff. Yeah. Cause his dad was probably is his biggest fan. I, I remember when uh, Wolfie kind of did a little commentary on each of the tracks on his album. He talked, Oh, dad really loved this or dad loved this song. Dad loved this part. You know, Eddie was his biggest fan and was such a huge fan of, of that album. So uh, I'm, I'm just so sick of the conversation that we need to have this big Van Halen reunion. There's no Van Halen without Eddie Van Halen. Even even with Wolfgang, it's still not really Van Halen, right? So just right. let them do their own thing. If they want to get together and do like a, an EVH tribute, 100 fucking percent. It's going to be, you know, the best thing ever. But if they don't, that's fine too. But yeah. anyways, uh, I just want to say, uh, so Wolfie wanted to honor his dad and his friend Taylor Hawkins, who is a huge Van Halen fan. If you watch uh, Taylor, uh, nine times out of 10 behind the drum kit, he was wearing uh, the, the Van Halen uh pattern uh tights right like loved it oh yeah so like i said dave Grohl on on bass uh wolfie was on guitar justin hawkins on vocals and josh freeze on drums uh they did a little hot for teacher and if if you'll just indulge me mark i'd like to play a little bit of that for you tonight by all means do that Here we go. 
I, I love that shot. You can see it on the screen. Wolfie's doing the intro, and they cut to Dave, and he's just like on his knee, just staring at the kid, like, fuck, this kid can play. Yeah. Hey, you guys. I wonder what the teachers are doing like this year. Justin Hawkins doing like the exact uh, lyrics from the beginning of Hopper Deep. Anyway, these guys are killing it. Um, and uh, yeah, go watch it on Paramount Plus. Or, you know, I, MTV didn't put any clips up. This is uh, a rip. Somebody shot it on their camera phone. That's why it doesn't sound the best. But um, you can watch it on Paramount Plus if you can. Uh, totally worth it. And of course, uh, Wolf, I, I should back that up a little bit. Wolfie's even doing the, the harmony because he did on tour for how many years? This guy in the article was amazed. Like, Wolfie's well, even doing the harmony. It's like he did for seven of years. Course, he was yeah. part of Van Halen. <laughs> he did two massive world tours. I love that people are just sort of becoming aware of Wolfie as if he just didn't exist before. Yeah. It's like, did you guys, like, just were you just not paying attention when he was touring with Van Halen? He was on bass, <laughs> playing with his dad, playing with his uncle, playing with David Lee Roth. Like, where, where were you guys when this was happening? <laughs> <laughs> like Wolfie is not a brand new thing. No, the, he has been uh, uh, he's been an ongoing uh, uh, master, like or whatever you want to call him. And this is not new. His presence is not new. Oh, it's unreal. And uh, Wolfie is on the bill uh, for the uh, Los Angeles Taylor Hawkins tribute concert on September twenty seventh. So now speculation is: do they do two other Van Halen songs? I wouldn't mind if he, they went out there and did two Mana songs. Like they're that good. I really think they should do that. Um, or uh, I would love to hear uh, Wolfie do some some Foo Fighters. I would love oh, to yeah. hear that. I mean, it's it's not. It wouldn't be completely out of his the realm of possibility for him to do that. Also, not only that, I would love to hear him and uh, Shane uh, uh, Taylor Hawkins' son Shane, who uh, just absolutely wailed on the drums for my hero. Um, oh, I would love to see those two kind of collab and uh, do like a little uh, jam sesh, something like that, because good Lord, that Wouldn't kid that be is amazing? so good. Oh. Yeah, it would. Well, and they, they brought up Nandy uh, Bushnell, too. Uh, of course, she was the young lady who challenged Dave yes, Grohl to a, yes. a drum off. Uh, and she went out, I think, was it Learn to, Learn to Fly? I think she did. And, and... I, I believe so. They did not put that on the uh, Paramount Plus highlights, which I thought was a crock of shit because I knew that she was going to be playing on that show um, and they didn't show her. But uh, but I do believe she did uh, learn to fly and killed it. Killed it. But yeah, you mentioned uh, Shane, a very emotional moment and kid fucking slayed it like and he looked just like his dad. He had that, that kind of same intensity and joy in mm -hmm. drumming that his dad did very very moving i i think uh, the whole hawkins family will be in los angeles hopefully we get shane uh doing another foo fighters track uh because that was really awesome i would love but, to hear it and uh you know not to mention uh dave grohl recorded those drums so many years ago for that track so uh uh you gotta not take away from the fact that you <laughs> he's he's playing not only uh uh the way his dad would play. He's also kind of uh, bringing in some of the Dave Grohlness of it all, um, which is not easy to do. It's not easy to balance that. And the kid just completely made that song his own, as far as I'm concerned. Oh yeah. And, and Dave even said in the intro, like, I think this drummer hits the drums harder than any other drummer I've ever seen. And he may be right. Like, did you see how Shane attacked yeah. those drums? Wow. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was hitting them hard. Yeah. It's not yeah. easy to do and keep, and keep your rhythm straight. Yeah. Uh, but let's keep on with the Wolfie news, shall we? Uh-huh. There's another little piece here. Of course, we mentioned uh, his performance at the uh, uh, Taylor Hawkins tribute concert, and officially the uh, and the podcast will rock crew is 100% Team Wolfgang. You do you. Don't worry about all these fucking idiots that say you need to reform Van Halen and all that. No. Nope. If you never play another song from your dad's band again in your life, that's cool with us because your shit is pretty fucking great. And I, I'm a huge, huge Mammoth WVH fan. 
I, I know they just announced a big tour with Alter Bridge. Of course, nowhere coming to Canada. Please, at some point, I, <laughs> I, I really wish Mammoth would find their way uh, north of the border, do a proper Canadian tour. I'll travel 8, 10, 12 hours. I don't care. Uh, I really would like to see these guys. But uh, the new other piece of Wolfgang Van Halen news this week, it was just today, actually. Uh, today, I don't know if you knew this, Mark. This is the 45th anniversary of the recording of Eruption. I did not know that, and yeah. that is very serendipitous that we would be recording tonight then. That's right. Now, we've already done Eruption. We did it with the uh, Chris L. Show, and we did Out of Love Again, which was on Eddie Van Halen's birthday. That's why we did Eruption. But um, the day the uh, Van Halen News Desk and Wolfie himself on Twitter, uh, they, he released a little 53-second clip of him uh, playing a part of Eruption. Uh, he's playing it uh, on his dad's Frankenstrat, which is the exact uh, guitar that it was recorded on uh, 45 years ago. Uh, he recorded this in 2015 while he was tracking some guitars for the first Mammoth uh, album. So I thought we'd give that a listen. What do you say? Sure. All right. This is Wolfgang Van Halen way back in 2015 doing a little piece of eruption. <laughs> give, me, give me a classic there, buddy. Uh, two different things. So I'm not uh, sure where, where I'm supposed to play it. I can't So yeah, the, the kid's okay at guitar. <laughs> I mean, uh, I just, it just, I've heard, I have heard people attempt to recreate the solo. I've heard people do pretty good job at covering this uh, eruption, um, but it's, there's always something about it that feels a little inauthentic. And that j just to say that, well, you can play it, but you don't sound like Eddie when you play it. Wolfie, on the other hand, very much <laughs> sounds like his dad playing this thing, and it it doesn't hurt the fact that he's literally playing on the Frankenstrat that uh, the song was recorded with. Um, so it helps. That helps. But I mean, I don't know. He just he had this look on his face, like I can do this in my sleep. I probably have done this in my sleep. Like this, this is just in my blood. So this is nothing to me. Like I can do this, no problem. And yet, still it didn't feel like he was being robotic with it. It just, it felt natural. It just came to him naturally. It looks like, um, and that's just, I mean, that's impressive. Just effortlessly. Right. And yeah. even at the Taylor Hawkins show, everything he was doing was just effortlessly. The kid is just unbelievably talented. Mark, have you ever tried eruption on the guitar? Yeah, I've tried. Um, I can uh, safely tell you that at one point I could do uh, a lot of it. Um, could not do all of it. Uh, still cannot do all of it. And at this point, I, uh, you know, I don't really care to try just because like, I don't, I don't need to have eruption on my guitar uh, uh, sort of repertoire in order to say like, I'm a guitar player. Look, look, see, because I did this one. It's like, no, no, no. That like, that's, a, that's, that's a special that that song, that solo, that's something special. Okay. And like, you only bust that out on a special occasion, maybe. Uh, and even then, maybe not. Just keep it in your arsenal. If you can play it, great, but maybe don't. And it started out as just a a warm-up. Uh, he was just uh, warming up because uh, he had a gig at the weekend, and uh, they are just practicing, and uh, Ted Templeman walked in and said, hey, what's that? Let's put it on tape. And that was Eruption. Pretty incredible. Eruption. Yep. Yeah. But last week, we didn't do Eruption. We did a balance track, and I'm very excited. I don't know if you caught this, Mark, on Twitter, but uh, I finally found a sealed copy of Balance on vinyl for almost a tenth of what other people have been paying for it. So I, I was very, very happy with that purchase. I still need to get a different kind of truth. So if anybody out there mm -hmm. uh, knows of a spare copy of a different kind of truth that won't bankrupt me, please let us know on Twitter. Follow us at Podcast Will Rock and, and give me a shout out. I need to get that record. Very important. Uh, follow the protocol of do not break, Corey. Uh, yeah, f find him <laughs> a decently priced uh, copy, please. Uh, yes. But yes, I, I did see that on Twitter, and I thought that was amazing. 
Um, and of course, it very fitting, very fitting. You would find you a copy of that. Um, but uh, as you say, we did uh, a song from Balance last week. We did "Don't Tell Me What Love Can Do" for our rock and poll. And uh, what were the results of the poll? Oh, this one kind of surprised me. I thought it'd be a little more definitive, but uh, it was seventy-two point nine percent. What dreams are made of? Twenty-seven point one percent. This dream is over. Uh, mm. So. Uh, maybe closer than what we've had lately. Uh, I thought we'd be more in the 80s for what the dreams are made of, but uh, this is 72.9%. Uh, a little bit surprising, but if you'd like, I'll get into the comments and maybe we'll get some insight on it. Yeah, let's get uh, let's get some answers on this. All right. First up, we have uh, a guest on the show before. Heath McCoy said, uh, not a fan of balance, but this song was always its one redeeming track for me. Sammy's lyrics feel insincere, like he's trying to connect with the grunge kids, but it's one of his best vocals. And the brothers Van Halen come on so heavy. One of Van Hager's finest, in my opinion. Uh, it's funny he mentions the mm. lyrics because I think the you know the band actually went because originally it was supposed to be a little lighter hearted Sammy track, and the band went to him and said, "No, we want it a little darker." So that's when he uh, changed the lyric, kind of more Nirvana style, to "Don't tell me what love can do, not look at what love can do," or whatever the original title was going to be. So right. Uh, next up, Kevin Brown, our good friend from the uh, Tom Petty Project, who actually did us up. A couple of new T-shirt designs, Mark. I can't wait to show you. They'll be in oh, our uh, they'll be in our store soon. One is a play splat and bone, uh, Sammy Hagar shirt, which <laughs> a lot of fun. And he even did up a logo and a shirt for the Cult of Mariano. I, I I'm hesitant to oh, put it on there, but man, uh, <laughs> I don't know. If, a, I don't know if le legally we can sell that. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to find out. I, it's a great shirt, and even though I I'm not a fan of the Cult of Mariano, I may get the shirt just because it's got a really cool goat's head design on it, but. Oh, I digress. Yeah. Kevin Brown says, love this track. Balance is a weirdly important Van Halen album to me because of where I was when it came out and a very specific freezing six hour journey in the back of an army Bedford truck in Washington state. Got to get him to tell us that story. Uh, yeah. Killer vocals and Alex deep, deep in the pocket while Eddie heavies it up. There you go. That's from Kevin. Uh, False premise says uh, so much better than man on a mission. The parentheses are lame, though. It even put them in parentheses, so that, that that's fantastic. Yeah, I, I agree. The parentheses are lame. So great comment there. Uh, good buddy Gene says, incredible song that shows off the top to bottom talent that this band had. I don't understand how one third of the votes are currently down, but the contrarians will never be able to ruin this one for me. Good on you, Gene. I'm right there with yeah. you. I love Stay this strong. track, too. Yeah. Uh, Greg says, gritty vocals, gorgeous harmonies, and a haunting guitar make this track a winner. Van Halen was never afraid to explore new directions. By the way, All-Star August was fantastic, and I really enjoyed Kelsey and Eric Sanich. You brought up uh, Chuck Klosterman, maybe a future guest. I don't know. Maybe we should reach out to him and talk about uh, his list. Uh, uh, you know, he ranked all the Van Halen songs uh, from like yeah, 131 would... to 1. So, yeah, potentially. Might have to get him on. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, Josh says, Splitted Performance and Sammy's Lyrical Rock and Tour was spot on. There you go. I Thanks agree. for that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our good friends from the Sean Geek and Fast Fred podcast said, I don't know, man. I just don't know. This one was this one, this one of those tracks that work against Sammy in the Dave versus Sammy Wars. Not my fave Sammy ballad. However, he followed that up with, Now I feel like an asshole. I voted before I listened in and mixed up my Van Halen songs with love in the title. I want to take <laughs> back my vote. I forgot how great this track is. This is the one standout on the album. The other love song. Well, that will come up later. So, well, there I'm you guessing. go. The the, yeah. the results of the poll make sense now. Freaking Sean, <laughs> you know what? I bet Sean was not the only one to misvote because uh, they thought the song title was a different one that they were thinking of. Um, so if that was you, you guys fess up. I wonder if that's a thing where people vote before listening to the song because I think that's come up before, uh, not from I, Sean but I'm, from someone else. Yeah. I'm going to assume uh, depending on what album and maybe depending on the song. Uh, yeah, I think I think uh, we get a lot of votes from those who uh, don't listen to the song first. You know, it is what it is. But uh, that's why we read the comments, because we know we know these guys are listening. Yep. Uh, our good friend Airhead says, you guys had a great episode until you started talking about fucking Kiss. <laughs> As one of the guys who <laughs> talked about Kiss, my apologies, but I do enjoy that band too. Uh, he said, seriously, such a great track. Looking at how contentious this one is proving to be, I'm grateful Kelsey and Eric were on to help give it the enthusiastic treatment this one deserves. 100% agree with that comment. Uh, he goes on to say, 
This one also has a special place in my heart for being the first new Van Halen song I heard since becoming a fan. I bought the Fuck album off my brother, who negotiated a bundle in 1984 for more money, smart, and Balance was the first album I was anticipating after becoming a huge fan. So that's a great perspective. He he came in right after Four Unlawful, so that, that's kind of cool. I can imagine that int- anticipation for Balance, especially becoming a big oh, fan yeah. so, so late. Uh, Jonathan says, the sound of Al Snare in this song it's the sound of a femur breaking into two. Just awesome sonics on this song, but man, the video, no smiles. It was like, where did the party go? And yeah, a lot of people alluded to the fact that, you know, the band was so close to breaking up at this point. They weren't really chop- talking, and the video did look a little awkward. We should have watched the video, actually. We never did, but uh, I-, I didn't get that feeling listening to the song, but watching the video, I totally get what Jonathan's talking about. And to that point, uh, Steve... Harold says that whole album sounds like a band that has grown tired of each other. Um, we only heard a couple <laughs> of tracks off that album. I can I don't get that vibe listening to it, but I, seeing no, the band perform either. at this time, I I, I yeah. can kind of get it from that perspective. Uh, John Mariano says this isn't majority rules. There is a pass fail system, and don't tell me has failed, which is Ugh. just unbelievably wrong. No, of course. And, of and course. here's there's the logo that. Uh, Kevin did for the Cult of Mariano, just so you could see it on your screen there, Mark. What do you think? Oh, man. It's like... <laughs> it's so great. Uh, I feel like... Uh, I feel like if John Mariano happens to see this thing, he will he will once again be a contrarian because he'll he'll say, they should have used one of my doodles for my characters. <laughs> like, yeah, prob- probably should have, John. But, uh, but no, I think that's pretty fantastic, actually. So, very you know, metal... It- if John were a metal goat, he would look exactly like that. So I, I thought Kevin <laughs> true. nailed it. Uh, Tom says, uh, Sammy the Circle did a hell of a cover on their lockdown release, and he actually gave us a link, a YouTube link. I checked it out, and he's 100% right. It is a hell of a cover. So uh, go uh, go to our Twitter Ooh, feed on this saying. chain, and you will see uh, that tweet from Tom and that fantastic uh, version by Sammy and the Circle. And that is this week's comments. All right. Well, can't win them all, but... Uh, we- According to the poll, it is what dreams are made of. So uh, don't tell me it's to slide on into the winner's circle. So ha 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 to all you contrarians. Um, all right. So we have rock and pulled. We have we have gone through the 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 news and uh, what the goings on. Corey, shall we now move ourselves to the wheel and see what song we're going to be discussing tonight? Yes, sir. And. Uh... We, we should talk about, I, I've been noticing how many people use the word manifest now, and I like to think it's because of you, Mark, because you started that whole <laughs> uh, manifest trend. So let's do some manifesting here tonight. And maybe you put humans being aside for tonight, because I know you, you brought okay. that up a few times. Pick I a did. new one. What what would you like to manifest here this evening? I Well, I'm going to, the other one, the other uh, favorite, <laughs> the one that uh, I'm really shocked we haven't landed on yet but uh that's just that's just making the anticipation grow even further but ain't talking about love is Mm. one of my all-time not even just for van halen just one of my all-time favorite rock tracks ever just ever um it just it just really cooks man i i can't wax poetic enough about that track i would really love to hear it and uh, uh and discuss it 100%. 100%. Hard agree. I would love for that to be spun tonight. I'm going to go in a different direction. Uh, we had a Sammy track uh, last week. I'm in the mood for another Sammy track. That one was a little divisive. I want to go back yeah. to an album that I think people largely agree is fantastic, and that's 5150 and uh, some Summer Nights. It's very warm here uh, this week in Saskatchewan. <laughs> We're clinging on to summer. I'd like to hear some Summer Nights. It's funny because uh, this uh, past couple of days over here, the summer has been uh, letting up a bit. It's, been, it's a little cool, a little <laughs> bit cooler. So I don't know. Some somebody's playing a playing a joke on uh, the <laughs> on Canada and the southern U.S. in terms of their weather patterns. Um, not sure if I like that very much, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, we've been in the nineties here uh, in Saskatchewan. So, well, all right, I'm well, not complaining. Keep it. We've sweated enough. <laughs> it's time for us to uh, to freeze a little bit. So. Uh, but what isn't going to freeze is this wheel after we spin it, and uh, hopefully 
maybe with our power of manifestation, uh, we will pull out a track that we both can just absolutely enjoy and rock out and have a very intellectual discussion. So whenever you're ready, whenever Sammy's ready, spin that wheel and let's give it a go. Here we go! And we are coming up oh, to, oh, watch this, oh. the seventh seal from Balance. Mark, do you have to run and grab us a special guest? I absolutely do. So hold that thought. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, this is a uh, fortuitous, I believe is the word uh, that I'm looking for, because we have spun the seventh seal. This is the track when the uh uh <laughs> this is the track that my my lovely lady has been waiting for and we promise that if uh we spin the track that she wants we will bring her on the show. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen and everything in between, Christy, say hi. Hi guys. How's it going? Oh, it's wonderful to have you here. We've been waiting and waiting for the seventh seal to get spun. And uh, tonight's tonight, and unfortunately, it's right after Dragon Con. So I understand you guys are, are a little worn down, but uh, hopefully looking forward to rocking out to some Van Halen tonight. Oh, absolutely. Like, I've been teased a couple of times with nearly landing, so I'm excited to get into this one. Now, I'm going to ask you, Christy, what is it about the seventh seal that, that really got to you? It's literally like an indiana jones style epic journey like everything about that song to me like every time i've ever listened to it like i am in the story that it's telling and that story can be a lot of different things you know depending on like if you take it literally literally or you know take it a little further with your imagination but like it's an adventure it's a quest i like that it's good answer. yeah uh, there was a it's been a while since i heard it but we had a little section with tibetan monks uh, kind of right off the hop so yeah that your uh, description of it being a quest i think is very apropos uh mark do you have any uh recollections of this one before we get into it not a ton uh i remember thinking uh or when eddie passed i kind of went on this uh van halen binge so to speak and just kind of went back and listened to a lot of my favorite tracks. And then uh, at one point I just got on Spotify and hit shuffle and just said, whatever you want to give me, just let me have it. Uh, Seventh Seal was definitely uh, a part of that group of songs that ended up playing. And bef But before that, I really didn't have too much of a uh, connection to it. It wasn't until uh, this person over here told me like that that is her van halen song i was like oh okay so now i have to uh sort of ingrain myself in it and learn it and just sort of be as familiar with it as possible just because i have such a good association with it now there you go so if you two are ready what do you say let's get into a little seven seal from 1995's balance do it let's do it Right now, at the risk of pissing off Christy, I do have to stop the song on occasion, A, so we don't get sued, and B, to get Mark's comments on the intro to that song. I, everybody was having a lot of fun when that song kicked in. It's absolutely the most different uh, Van Halen intro. I, I, I really I struggle to think of another track by them that it begins... Uh, so oddly you know what i mean like you when you think of van halen you don't think automatically uh you're gonna hear uh tibetan throat singing 
uh, as an <laughs> intro or uh, this to me sounds like, uh, hey, you know what? Right before you watch this Doctor Strange movie, here you go. Here's something to uh, sort of put your mind at uh, uh, in that in that similar fashion. Um, or maybe I'm just saying that because I've recently watched Doctor Strange uh, lately. I don't know. But that to me, that's sort of the vibe it gives off. But um, right away, man, they're just it, it, it cooks like the, the opening riff, the op- just the band coming together really cooks. Love that little uh, octave jump Michael does on the bass, uh, just sort of galloping uh, at the top of the frets. So uh, that's I mean, we love it when Michael shows off a little bit. How do you feel about it, Christy? I have none of the technical um, comparisons to make, but, like, for me, what makes or breaks any kind of a, like, just favorite hit song is it does have to grab me right away. Like, if this the buildup is too slow, then I you lose my attention. And, like, you're not expecting that behind this, like, kind of, like you said, like, this, this temple, you know, music, uh, the little wind chimes, and then, boom you know you're going somewhere with this song like immediately there's no question that it's going to be a good ride very well said and i know i said it last week i'm going to say it again this week the production on this album i think is fantastic Uh, i love bruce fairburn as a producer uh there's so much bass you mentioned that little octave jump you know the the bass kind of comes up too right in the mix you can really Mm -hmm. really catch that octave jump it was fantastic but uh, everybody sounds uh, tremendous here right off the hop even the uh, tibetan monks uh, doing the throat singing i thought sounded great <laughs> it's hard to screw that up unless you're just uh trying to imitate them but yeah H- have you tried it Let- let's hear some tibetan throat uh, singing here mark wow. oh that's not bad here i thought i was gonna catch you and embarrass you on the podcast but no you actually did pretty good i mean no that was pretty embarrassing but to hell with it leave it in there well, at least I could say you're you're the second best Loki uh, on the call here tonight because uh, Christy ah! <laughs> kicked your ass in that regard. Damn it! Absolutely. I mean, she did. It's not fair. She had a wig. <laughs> oh, that's the reason. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's, that's the exactly the reason. Only the reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, lyrically, uh, I, I kind of like the story of, of this song, which is uh, uh, it was kind of uh, recommended. Uh, Eddie was, uh, just kind of found uh, had a newfound sobriety around this time. And his therapist actually urged him to relax and imagine where he was after drinking a six pack of beer. And uh, during this period is when he wrote the Seven seal, this very mystical sounding Seven seal. And Sammy really kind of continues that with the lyrics here talking about finding the miracles, splash the holy water on me, the holy trinity, all that kind of stuff. So I really kind of like the direction this song is taking. Yeah, they go uh, on the sort of religious vibe on that, but uh, I didn't know that uh, Eddie's sobriety had a lot to do with uh, the the making of this song. So that makes sense. Um, that happens a lot with uh, people, especially like in a program. Uh, you know, there's a lot of like religious overtones in, involved. So yeah, I could see that. It's also called the Seventh Seal. So right away, you know, you're going to get some sort of uh, theological. Uh, uh, you know undertone in there as well perhaps um and based on this first verse yeah it's there it's all there christy anything to add i think this is just like what gives me that whole indiana jones like you know like holy grail vibe um you know taking the lyrics literally and that's where like i get that like sense of adventure um but other than that, um, I like how you have a clear picture of the story that is about to get told and then a minute to rest with, you know, the music that follows after. So you can kind of like sit on it. Um, a lot of times I lose interest in songs if I can't follow the story that it's telling because it's just like too quickly paced, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely.
so okay not to harp on it not to bring it up because i'm going to uh but you guys know i'm a sammy guy no disrespect to david lee roth it's fine but roth couldn't sing this no. like could you imagine if roth attempted to sing that he couldn't do this he absolutely could not do it no dave is good at what he does yes. sammy is good at everything i i think pretty much i i even sammy's bad vocal performances are, are pretty fucking good and, yeah exactly uh, and i only bring it up amazing. it's just because look i've i've heard sammy do uh the roth era tunes uh not many but i've heard him do it and he's fantastic there's mm -hmm. a reason why you're not gonna get roth uh singing any sammy tunes because roth just he doesn't possess that vocal ability and so when i when i always uh talk about how i'm more of a sammy guy because of his vocal prowess and i prefer it it's because of songs like this it's because of the things a, a lot from balance as a matter of fact mm -hmm. uh it just showcases the kind of vocalist sammy is uh you can talk about your, the lyrics all you want but sammy just he just has that power and this song is full of power you need power vocals to accompany it and I'm sorry, but David Lee Roth's vocals just would not give this song the extra oomph and power that it needed. And thus, we might have gotten just a completely different, less good song. Well, it's interesting because, like, I didn't know that, you know, it was at a time, like Corey mentioned, of Eddie's sobriety. So, like, listening to that last verse through that knowledge, um, I don't think Dave can give the grit that that song needed like if you're listening you know and then comparing it to his struggle with getting sober you know lord don't let me drown not yet i'm in a cold sweat like that's pretty obviously like not right on the nose but it's also symptoms of going through getting sober um and i think dave would have put too much party on it for the seriousness of the time, like Sammy just, he's got that grit and that sound of suffering in his throat. I don't know. Like, yeah. that, I, I get exactly what wrong. you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, Dave wouldn't have gave the song the gravitas it maybe deserved, whereas Sammy can because his range is infinitely better than Dave. And I don't, even the 100% Dave guys who are out there, I don't think they can even deny that, right? Dave trying to do this song would be a disaster. Dave is great in his wheelhouse, but his wheelhouse is somewhat limited, whereas Sammy doesn't own a wheelhouse. He can just do whatever the fuck he wants, and it's amazing. <laughs> He's, and, uh, he breaks the wheel. He breaks the wheel, and this is maybe his best-sounding Van Halen. This and For Unlawful, I think, are his two best-sounding Van Halen albums. And I even little disagree. Oh, and little things in that chorus, like uh, when he sings I'm in a cold sweat, the way he hits sweat, it cold mm -hmm. sweat, right? Like just cool little uh inflections like that just really make this track yeah he's just he's just very uh he's versatile that way in his vocal ability like i said say what you want about some of his lyrics uh but you, you cannot deny the man's ability to be a uh just a well-rounded vocalist and still like still yeah, uh, and amazing still. vocalist yeah unreal Okay, now for all those listening with headphones on, listen to what Al's doing on those cymbals yes. during that section. It's fucking killer. I was just gonna say, man, he's like Alex is like, hey, let's uh, have a little ride. This song needs a little ride. <laughs> so here you go. Here you go. 
just every once in a while you got eddie doing the the lead and the rhythm there sounding great he's one of the best rhythm guitar players of all time as well as well as lead and al just got to put a little thing like oh yeah i'm here too check this shit out and sounds amazing (laughs) I, I love the songs that make it appear like uh, uh, the brothers not exactly trying to one up each other, but just trying to uh, keep at the same pace. You know, Eddie's going to go off in his thing, and Alex is like, eh, "Hold on, hold on, no, 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 it, don't you get ahead so, of me." Somewhere in the mix, there's Mike Anthony going, "Can I have another octave change or something? I'm here too." <laughs> He's like, uh, "We doing harmonies or what? I'm ready." <laughs> All right, I got a little Mikey uh, there. Uh, he mm-hmm. was a little lower octave maybe, but uh, he was at least every once in a while. They, they just kind of bring that slider up for him. Here you go, buddy. Here's a little Mikey. And then take it right there back you go. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go on there, Mikey. You, you have a go. <laughs> it's, it's I, like... I don't want to I don't want to stop the song because Christy's enjoying it so much, but I feel bad. I kind of have to. I can't afford lawyers. There's, I mean, there's that, and there's just, there's just so much to discuss because there's a lot happening. It doesn't sound like there's a lot happening, but there is. Uh, uh, especially if you're listening to what Eddie's doing, um, he's just, he is, he's keeping, um, like the rhythm's going, the rhythm section is keeping the pace of the song moving. And then Eddie is adding, uh, just basically some ethereal sort of, uh, 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 ornamentation going on in the back. He's not doing a ton of guitar work, uh, on the surface. And yet he is, he's, he's keeping the flavor, uh, spicy, shall we say. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to just say, don't worry about stopping the song. Like, I stop it and replay it and back it up a million times when I'm practicing, like, my perfect Sammy impression because I want to be <laughs> able to do, like, every hook and ah uh, and yeah, you know, so. Can you give us a little bit of that Sammy impression? Like, a, oh you sing God. a verse? Well, uh, well if, uh, if, if we start a Patreon, maybe we'll have a tier <laughs> and uh, uh, you guys can uh, have a go. Like Christy and I will both do a duet of Sammy uh, uh, impressions. Sign me up. Fuck, I'm going to pay for that tier. There you go. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Yes. You, you heard it here, folks. That is the Patreon tier right there. Forget Mark Mosier Lawn and sings while he does it. I want to hear the Mark and Christy duet. I accept that. <laughs> little bit of michael flavor he's like right before we fade out every like, once in a while yeah we're, we're gonna push here. the fader I'm up yep. <laughs> we adore right. you michael anthony we do love me some mikey that's the seven seal from balance guys uh, i want to read you a quote uh from chuck losterman in his uh ultimate ranking of van halen songs uh he ranked the seven seal 101st out of all of van halen's tracks um and he says wow. ambitious it starts off with a sample of Tibetan monks and written during a provisional stretch of Sobriety Freddy 
There's a seriousness to the seventh seal that warrants appreciation. It would be fine on a mid-period Yes album. It does not, however, capture or express the strongest qualities of this particular quartet. I don't think I agree with the Yes comment, Mark. In- no, because what is he, what's he trying to say? Is he is he trying to imply that Van Halen, uh, this song is their uh, uh, like prog type of uh, of track? Because yeah, I don't I don't get it. I don't get where you're going with the yes thing. Or is it because uh, yes was so prog heavy that a lot of their music does sound sort of epic in scope? Uh, maybe that. Maybe, uh, maybe this. Maybe this dude uh, expected a little bit too much from uh, the way the tracks start? I don't know. I, we're finding that people's expectations versus the reality of a lot of Van Halen tracks seem to uh, skew, you know? Yeah. Uh, i tell you, this song was nominated for a Grammy uh, for Best Hard Rock Performance. I don't think Yes was ever nominated for Best Hard Rock Performance at the Grammy, so... No. I'm curious uh, who they lost it to that year. I wonder if I could look that up. Why don't you guys talk about the track while I check that out? Would you uh have you have you had uh, much experience in the band? Yes. No, I don't think I know who that is. Or if I if I do, I don't remember that I know. So, uh, a sample of one of their songs made it into uh YouTube meme culture there for a little bit. Uh, did you ever see those videos? The to be continued. No. Oh well, I'll, I'll show you that sometime. But fame, probably uh, the band's most famous track. Uh, uh, the the intro is used in that in those videos. Uh, you'll probably know it if you heard it. But other than that, no, not a lot uh, with yes going on in terms of uh, <laughs> hard rockness. And so this All person right. who compared them to yes, it's just on site, right? For me, yeah. Like okay. I don't understand a lot of the technical ins and outs of what he was talking to and comparing them with another band, but he sounded like he was entirely wrong. (laughs) In our opinion, yes. (laughs) All right. I found the other acts that were nominated uh, for the Hard Rock Performance Grammy in 1996. Uh, First was Allison Chains for Grind. Oh. Right? Good track. Yeah. Next was uh, one of my personal all-time favorites, Primus, why known as Big Brown Beaver. (laughs) <laughs> i did not know that one was nominated that's hilarious love that song next is red hot chili peppers blood sugar sex magic of course uh van halen seven seal and the winner that year pearl jam spin the black circle wow not the track i would have picked uh for their uh win i mean good for pearl jam and i love pearl jam but uh that is, yeah that's not the track i would have imagined interesting that's so what would you have voted for out of those five? What would have been your Grammy award-winning track? Uh, if I'm being completely transparent and honest, probably Grind. Yeah. Just because, I mean, I, I that would have been a, a biased voting just because uh, in in the 90s, I was just real, real big into uh, Alice in Chains. I was big into Van Halen too, but uh, Alice in Chains were, you know, uh and Soundgarden, those were my dudes. At the time, um, because of how old I was, I probably would have gone for Red Hot Chili Peppers because I did not actually get my dad's balance album until a few years later. Mm, okay. And then it was one of few CDs that I was allowed to have. So. <laughs> there you go. Well, would I you tell have you on Primus. I, I may have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got to be honest. That is the song that, uh, here's a little bit of it for you. That That's the song I've put on the Pot of Thunder uh, listener submission list. And I'm hoping to hell someday they, they pick why known as Big Brown Beaver. Uh, yeah. it, it's just, it's glorious musically, uh, lyrically. This thing is amazing. Uh, I know we're not a Primus podcast, but here's a little bit. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> Wait, that's different. He keeps wanting to play Professor Nutterbutter's House of Treats. No! Nope, not that one.
my wife gets sick of me playing that song in the car with the kids in there. I'm like, they don't know what the fuck they're singing about. They're, they're, they're talking about a, 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 an aquatic creature. Why Nona loved her big brown beaver and she stroked them all the time. Yes, it, it, it's a happy song. It's beautiful. It's about a you know a person and their pet animal. Uh, that's right. And, and it's celebrating wildlife. That's what it is. Uh, that's 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 all it needs to be. Um, yeah, we are not the Primus podcast, but we could be. So, well, if we're be... just doing that one song, I would be in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would be an interesting journey. Um, if if uh, if there's a podcast out there already covering the Primus catalog god bless you that's all i can say <laughs> all right guys it's time to vote uh, this might seem academic but what do you say we give the first vote to christy since she was oh. nice enough to join us this week that's true that's true so uh well christy the the way you haven't been on the show so i'll just assume you don't know how it works and uh what we do is we ask you is this song what dreams are made of or is this uh the dream over for you for seventh seal uh, what say you? Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to give commentary. No, I mean, like, <laughs> this song has always been what dreams are made of. It being one of the few albums that I was allowed to possess in preteenhood, you know, since a lot of the music was sus, as the kids say these days, to my parents, you know. Um, I don't know. Like, I think I've played it on repeat. I still have that CD, the same CD. It still is well taken care of. And there have been times I've still played it on repeat. Um, so yeah, like it's my favorite Van Halen song. One day I hope to perform it in the style of Sammy Hagar. Um, all the screeching and screaming and throat growling that, Mark is going to have to teach. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> I Lucky can't wait. Maybe... Not, a, not a lot of uh, throat screaming with uh, Sammy Hagar's, but uh, yeah. I you know what? For our, <laughs> our our series finale in 77 episodes, maybe we should end with you guys doing the Seven Seal. What do you say? I'm. We could totally make that happen. So, but uh, I I don't know. I like the uh, the Patreon tier thing as well. <laughs> so you know. If, well, we'll uh, we'll let the audience decide how they feel about it. There I you will go. Be foolish for your money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark, your turn to vote. What do you? What say you? Is this dream alive or is it over? <laughs> and we all know goddamn well if you wanted to get laid tonight, you were voting yes on this one. He beat me to it <laughs> because I was about to be like, I swear I did not have like anything poking into his ribs with a threat. <laughs> then how do you explain this sharp pencil right beside <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> how do I follow that? Uh, is this the most uh, epic of Van Halen tunes? Probably not. However, it's still very good. It, uh, complete. If you had no... Uh, uh, notion of what this song was prior to listening to and y you're introduced to it by uh, this these Tibetan monks you think uh, uh, uh what's what's happening or did Van Halen go new age uh, on, on us all of a sudden what happened uh, but no they just wanted to give you a little extra flavor and I really like the context of where the song comes from and uh, what inspired it and look I'm not going to, I mean, I'm just going to keep saying it. Sammy Hagar just sounds amazing on this album. He sounds amazing regardless. He's the, he's the better vocalist. I'm sorry. He is. He, I'm just, <laughs> I'm sorry. In terms of singing, he's the better vocalist. And this song is a prime example of his vocal capability. And I'm, I can't stop hearkening on that. Um, But not to be overshadowed by the rest of the guys in the band whatsoever, especially that rhythm section. Big props to Michael and Alex. Uh, and of course, Eddie providing the sort of ethereal wall of sound that uh, that's happening uh, to provide extra flavor for you all. I mean, like this is just this is a good rocking track. And as we said on the show, do you really need anything more from Van Halen than that? Personally, me? No, not all the time. I just need something that cooks. Seven Seal cooks. So 
there's my vote. And uh, and now it's all on you, Corey. Are you going to be the Mariano contrarian and tell us that the dream is just not not only is it over, it's dead, or will you rise above it and say this is what dreams are made of? From the stories I've heard, I fear Christy, so I don't want her tracking me down in Saskatchewan to kick my ass if I voted this song down, but I wouldn't anyway. Uh, this was a great track, and I, I got to be honest, when we were talking originally about this podcast, Mark, you'd mentioned Christy's favorite song is The Seven Seal, and maybe when we spun it, she would come on the show. So when I heard that, I'm like, I'm not even going to listen to Balance uh, because I want to be kind of pleasantly surprised. I hadn't heard a lot of this album until we started talking about doing the show, I heard some of the bigger tracks, Can't Stop Loving You, uh, Not Enough, uh, Amsterdam, that kind of stuff. But I, I, I kind of knew Seven Seal, but I wasn't really familiar with it. So uh, listening to it with kind of fresh ears tonight, fell in love with this song. I love everything about it. Lyrically, it's great. The band, again, phenomenal. Bruce Fairbairn. Uh, I know Chris L. and Pot of Thumber hates uh, Bruce Fairbairn and his production style, but he produced some of my favorite albums of all time, like Pump and New Jersey and everything else. I thought he fucking nailed it with this band. Everyone sounds tremendous. I love it. Whenever that fader came up and gave me a little Mikey, it, it kind of made me smile. Like, oh, there he goes. And no, oh, it's it's gone again. And I, I just really kind of love that. Uh, but and, and like you said, I love both Sammy and Dave. Uh, I lean Dave just because when he's in his wheelhouse, he's tremendous. And lyrically, I think he does a really great job. But it doesn't mean I don't love Sammy. Sammy's fantastic. Uh, he, he's put in some, some stinkers lyrically and... I, I struggle to think of a, a track that he didn't sing well on. I think he's sung well on pretty much every single song we've covered. And I, I struggle to think of a song in the future we're going to cover that he didn't sing well on. But he's really top of his game on this song. Like I said, the little inflections on, on, on words here and there. And even when he just opened it up and just let it fly, sounded tremendous. Uh, for all the people who say Balance is a garbage album, you're missing out. Because this is a really underrated album, in my opinion. And uh, I've loved almost every song we've done off this album. I can't wait to hear more. Absolutely. Well said. And there it is. Uh, a, a, a surprise guest on a show. I know we talked about it at the top of the show. It's like, oh, it's, it's nice for just you and I to chill out and just do a song, <laughs> you know, decompress. And then, no, lo and behold, the wheel said, bitch, you thought. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it was time. It was time for Christie's debut. They've heard so much about you. You're friendly. Goblin girlfriend attack. Yes, the friendly <laughs> goblin girlfriend wouldn't have it any other way. And that is the show, you guys. We've done it. We have we've got another balance track on the records, on the books, and what a track it was. So uh after that, Corey, tell the people where they can uh find uh you we mentioned new merch. Tell them where they can find new merch, where they can find you if they want to shout you out, and where they can follow the show. They can follow us, www.podcastwillrock.com. You can get your merch there. You can uh, catch up on old episodes. Drop us a line. Actually, we just got an email uh, while we're recording tonight by a fellow by the name of Buck Goodman. Uh, and he said, I look forward to your shows every week and sometimes listen to them twice. Great to nice. hear a fellow Canadian commenting on the legendary Van Halen rock on. Thank you very much, Buck, for listening. Uh, and thank you for dropping a line and letting us know. And uh, please, if you'd like to let us know what you think of the show, uh, do so, even when you tell us we suck, which is on occasion. But uh, lately, the uh, the lovers have outnumbered the haters, so we really appreciate that. Uh, Boom, if you want more that. me, yeah, if you want more me, I can't imagine why. I do uh, two more podcasts. Uh, one of them, Backtracks, Aerosmith Revisited, uh, with the aforementioned John Mariano, uh, where we're breaking down the entire uh, Aerosmith catalog. We've actually tweaked how we're doing the mixtape. So uh, uh, listen for those episodes Ooh. dropping very soon. We might have a new co-host uh, on those shows as well. Oh. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And uh, Backtrack Steam Music, where we're talking everything uh, music and movies. We're going to get Mark on that show very soon, talking about some of his favorite songs uh, from movies coming up. So, uh, uh, But if you want to find me uh, on Twitter, uh, at CD Morset, and the show is at uh, Podcast Will Rock. Right on, right on. You can find me at Mark the Bat on Twitter and Instagram. Drop me a line. Tell me uh, what's up. And also, uh, how badly do you want to hear the Sammy Hagar impression? Let us know because hey, we can make that a reality. But uh, we're we're uh, we're still working on that uh, that tier. But 
thinking thinking it might have to be a thing at this point we've teased it so much uh but so be on the lookout and let us know give us some feedback on that uh christy do you want to uh promote anything give them uh, your you know do you want the people to know where you are i'm here she's here that's all you get <laughs> i'm <laughs> here it's good. that's all you deserve <laughs> so, so. That's you'll just have to make do with that. So I hope I hope you enjoyed her on the show. Maybe maybe if I uh, coerce her enough, we can get her on an, another track. I if mean, she... I'll come in and play on Amsterdam. Uh -huh. when... Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, you heard it here. That's right up my alley. It's recorded. Can't take it back. So when Amsterdam comes around, Christie's coming to town. Uh, yeah, that's how we roll, and that's how it goes. Uh, another one in the books. Another one uh, for your records put a spin on balance it is awesome the seventh seal is awesome and you're awesome because you tuned in to our show we are and the podcast will rock and we will rock you later